This is Bad Pete No with the Dyson Sphere Program video, and uh, tonight we're going to be having fun uh, wasting time and energy with fidget spinners. So initially I set out to kind of answer the question of if we could use the new distributed logistics system as um, a method to uh, dispose of excess hydrogen. Throughout the game there's certain process or certain stages of the game where we're going to, to have more or less hydrogen and being able to deal with excesses is uh, a critical focus uh, that evolves as your progression through the game evolves. And while myself, I do prefer the option of always trying to have like a perfect ratio of hydrogen in practice, that's just not a thing. And while my findings did kind of result in this is not a super efficient way to burn off hydrogen, it's kind of wasteful, uh, consumes a lot of resources, I did actually discover some really interesting phenomena about the behavior of the uh, distribution logistics and their associated fidget spinners that I'd like to share. So first, I started by creating this little system that basically uh, the one on the left here is requesting, the one on the right is uh, distributing, and so they're kind of in this feedback loop where we're sending out with bots and returning with belts. And we actually managed to consume a um, relatively decent uh, amount of energy with this. Um, we've got uh, an average of between 30 and 36 a minute. Um, total hydrogen being burned off by this. It's not a ton, but it's a relatively small circuit, and uh, we can see the consumption. But what I observed uh, initially was that uh, not all of our drones were being used, and I wanted to see if I could uh, make this system a little bit more effective. So the next thing I produced was this guy. And this has uh, two requesters and one supplier, and you'll notice that one side's full. And I thought that that was very odd behavior. So notice also that it's actually consuming less energy, and that's largely because of this bottleneck that's going on right here. And notice that it definitely seems to be biasing one side of the loop. So then I thought, is this based on cardinal directions? And I tried inverting it, but as you can see, the same side is still being biased. Now with this one, the uh, backup is not quite as severe. I don't have an understanding as to why because there's uh, a thousand nuggets in both systems. But even if we turn this off and give it a second to pull up, make sure those bottlenecks get cleared, and then we wait for it and we flip the supply back on, we should see the exact same pattern emerge. The right side is uh, going to continue to flow while the left side becomes saturated. Isn't that strange? And now if we go over to this one, and we do the exact same thing, we're going to say, all right, no more supplying. We're going to wait until all of our bottlenecks clear out here. So now we can see uh, oh, I'm sorry, 500 in my circuit. Uh, we see that everything's pretty much stopped. I've got 10, I've got 10, and I've got 10 fidget spinners in each. Everything's set correctly. So when I flip it on, the expectation is that the right side should become bottlenecked and the left side is going to remain open. These circuits are radially symmetrical. You flip them from left to right, and you flip them from top to bottom. I see absolutely no reason that one side uh, would be bias over the other. Um, and this does not appear to be in any way related to cardinal direction on the map. This was copied via blueprint, and no matter how many times I start and stop this, the same side is always going to be bias. Perhaps it retains some sort of degree of information about which was created first. Like, there must be some sort of prioritization check when two requesters are requesting the same thing at the same time. You have to be able to decide who's going to get it first. Uh, but I can't find any rhyme or reason to it. Um, we do see that this one um, actually chugs a little bit less power than the, uh, the one with only two. But that's largely because of the bottlenecking. Um, with your upgrades cranked up all the way, uh, these drones can actually fully keep up with uh, blue belts and blue sorters. It's actually really impressive. Um, I haven't done any crazy upgrades in the tech tree, 
Uh, we can actually just take a look real quick for posterity's sake. Uh, let's see, so which ones are actually affecting it? Does this affect it? I don't feel like it doesn't. That does not. Does this. That does not. Uh, this is definitely a thing. Um, that's related to um, our sorters, so that's spamming out the sorters as fast as they're going to go. You can see I haven't messed with the range at all. Um, I know the logistics carrier engine um, does make a difference here um, as far as the bot flight speed. So we are looking at uh, carrier engine 6, and we are looking at um, some relatively high carrier capacity. Um, so a decently spammy logistics carrier can um, outcompete belts, at least at short range. So that's some good information on that. I also tried out this guy just to try to see if I could understand the, the bottlenecking behavior a little bit better. So I've got a thousand silica in here. We're going to set this to distribute and we can see it's got eight available routes. We'll observe pretty quickly that some of those return routes are going to begin to saturate. But we'll find that that saturation clears out and the bottleneck's going to remain at the bottom. This distributor right here is going to... Um, gobble up more of the uh, output than any of the others and only when this one really becomes saturated we see this one's kind of uh, chugging away as well but we can see even it's starting to drain off that bottleneck's going to clear out and eventually what we're going to see is it's all ending up right here so these look you know like they're not quite as symmetrical as the other ones I built but I don't see any reason why it would be favoring this one, but it definitely appears to be playing favorites. So perhaps there's some hidden numbering system in in these uh, that, you know, maybe it has an identifier and in the instance of uh, two requesting the same thing, uh, that it's going to favor them in order of that identifier. Perhaps it's based on the order in which they were created. Uh, that is entirely possible. That may persist in blueprinting as well. So. Um, one thing I haven't tested is to clone out this design multiple times and see if it plays favorites across both. Um, but another thing I did check was this solution. What if we have two of these arrays, but we only fill up one of them? So this is all set to copper right now. And I'll need to set, first I'm going to set this one to distribute. Then I'm going to set this one to distribute. So now only the top one has the copper initially. But notice um, very quickly we're going to find that again, this top right one, that one's going to kind of take priority over everything else. And then we see the bottom right one takes priority over the bottom left one. We'll end up getting more uh, frequent spurts out of there. So again, no real discernible, um, conclusive discernible uh, reason for this behavior. My hunch is it's based on the order in which they are created and that this information may be preserved uh, when blueprints are used. So yeah, we definitely see it's preferring first this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. It's really fascinating behavior. And so the actual like total power being consumed is going to drop lower and lower. This one actually does chew up juice a little bit better than the other two designs or the other designs so if you did want to actually use this as a hydrogen sink which i don't recommend uh having a bunch of these may not be a terribly shabby idea and then i also have this design which i have not fed yet but i believe everything is all set up and ready to go where this center one is going to be kind of my catalyst one here right okay so we got everything's tweaked for stone bricks I haven't actually test driven this one yet. Might have want to pick something with a slightly higher contrast in color so we can see that a little bit better. But yeah, it's distinctly favoring this one, which appears to be uh, part of the blueprinting. But it also seems to be kind of favoring this side over this side on the top. So for these ones, I copied the copper blueprint, I rotated it, and then I copied this middle section and pasted it down here. And you can see it's basically not getting anything at all. So even though these lines are fully saturated, nothing's making it back into the loop. 
we have this bottleneck that's being created by the sorters. Now, there's more than enough to go around. Um, we should be able to distribute to all of these pretty effectively. Um, but because it um, is favoring them in specific orders, uh, this bottleneck is having a dramatic effect. And we see that our supply line is being absolutely crippled. Um, so I would recommend taking that into consideration. If you think that you can just like dump it in your network, supply a million different points with it, and that you're going to be good to go, um, that is not the case. So perhaps, um, you know, the, the devs can shed some light on this or, um, you know, you can experiment uh, yourself to try to understand um, when multiple um, distribution sites are, uh, or um, distribution logistics facilities are requesting and or supplying the same item, um, how that prioritization process is going to um, actually impact your logistics network. Because it seems like with three supplying and six demanding, I should be good to go, right? But I'm not, because I got this massive bottleneck. Um, one solution might be some kind of buffer system that continues to cycle items throughout these three, but um, I haven't really gotten that, that far in my thought process. And then just one more benchmark that I did for kind of just um, power consumption was I took a look at that initial circuit that just used two because, um, well, let's hop back and look at it real quick. Um, one, because it just looks really darn cool. You know, I kind of think that's a, that's a nice little effect we got going on there. Um, the fidget spinners ever flinging back and forth between the two, nice little swirly, swirly effects. And yeah, we're consuming about, um, you know, between 30 and 36 uh, hydrogen per minute. Um, I could probably tweak the timers on that to get a more clear result um, because it's as these decide, okay, I've, I've finished chewing up the one I'm at, um, that it, it scoops up a new one. So it's not precisely uh, consistent, but then if we hop over to this guy, all we've really done here is kind of spread out the gap and that is, a, that is a pretty nifty pattern to watch. Um, probably should have picked something with higher contrast just for a niftier effect, but I didn't. And uh, this one I feel like actually consumes a little bit less power. And my reasoning for why I think that is the case um, is that um, I believe that the logistics bots um, that their, their power is derived from two factors. One, the, um, the liftoff, and two, the distance that they're going to have to travel. This is conjecture. I haven't actually done enough testing to determine this. Now, unlike a belt, you know, where, um, you know, if you're, you're putting out, you know, 60 products a minute and you're consuming at 60 products a minute, the length of the belt in the circuit doesn't really have much of an impact in the process. But because you've got stacks, you've got downtime, not everything's always doing what it's supposed to be doing when it's supposed to be doing it. The distance that these bots have to fly has a much bigger impact on your ability to consistently supply. Um, unlike the belts that can just fill up as much as you want, you can continue to stack them. You can get like, I think it's like, what, 7,200 uh, um, items a, a, a minute or something ridiculously spammy like that. Um, you're much more capped um, as far as like the distance of the drones uh, the, or the travel distance of the drones is going to have more of an impact because that's more of your time spent with no bots in the bay. Um, they just come come back and quickly like flick forward. You see the power spike down for a minute there, um, but they, they take a little bit more time. So over distances, you're going to start to see uh, performance drops. I would not recommend designs where you have huge gaps across factories that are being completely supplied by bots unless you have just tons and tons and tons of these. But at that point, I think you're going to run into um, other similar issues uh, relating the prioritization order. So again, we're seeing, I just saw it dip down to like 18. The other one I saw it dip down to 28. But this is consuming significantly less power. And that's just because I think, again, um, the bots are just spending more time in flight. They're not fully able to, um, you know, it's not, it's not like we're, we're, we're spamming it to capacity where they always have something to do. I feel like if these systems were a little bit closer that we would be consuming a little bit more power, um, maybe like, you know, not, we could probably put some of a gap in here, 
um, compared to the other circuit and get similar power drains, but um, spreading them out further uh, actually resulted in um, lower pa power consumption because I believe we're just underutilizing the circuit. Um, and uh, that is just such a nifty effect to watch. Yeah, more of our, um, so again, we've got, uh, I believe, like a thousand or it's either 500 or a thousand that we've got in this circuit right now. Let me just look here. Yeah, I think I think I got 500 in here, but um, most of it at any given point in time is in transit um, between either the bots or the belts. Most of it's not being held back. The fact that any of it's being held back at all kind of indicates to me that um, this distance is more than uh, two distribution sites uh, and two sets of bots can really handle, even with the uh, level of upgrades that we've got going on here. Uh, so that's all I got for tonight. And if you found this video helpful or if you have any additional information to contribute, uh, please leave that in the comments. And also, um, shout out to uh, Neilaus for providing some really excellent content on uh, logistics distribution and just Dyson Sphere in general. Learned a lot from watching his videos. Um, and really good content. If you haven't, you should check it out. But uh, based on my YouTube analytics, the fact that I'm getting a lot of traffic from that channel suggests you probably saw it before you saw me. So uh, that's all I got. Thanks for watching.